Welcome to Thinking Women, the Intelligent Conversation Show. Woo! We're back for episode three. So thank you to everybody who's written in. We love all your comments and all your support. That's all absolutely brilliant. So who have we got today, Lou? Well, we've got an absolutely stellar lineup, Mags, and I'm absolutely thrilled. We've got Nikki Wood, who you're talking to. I am. Um, Managing Director of County Employee Benefits. And she's on the sofa with Sherilyn McCrory, newly appointed MP for Falmouth and Truro, or Truro and Falmouth, whichever way round you want to put it. And I'm, we've got Ella Butler, celebrity makeup artist, who's going to be showing us how to do a quick day to evening smoky eye on Mags, on Mags's marvellous makeover. <laughs> and then I'm talking to Emma Griffin, the lovely lady who's a spiritual mentor and um, medicine practitioner. And we're going to be talking about women's mental health in light of all the social media stuff that's been going on recently. And so it's quite... Yeah, it's a bit of a theme, isn't it, this, this um, episode, so talking about, about mental health at work and, and all the other things um, around that. So, but first, our inbox, I mean, my inbox has been packed Always with packed. loads of things. So seriously, it's been absolutely brilliant. A couple of things have, have stood out for us, and we always like to, to pick on the quirky, <laughs> don't we? So, um, inflatable trousers. What, the actual? <laughs> well, I mean, look at these. <laughs> I mean, these are all men. Please tell me they're not going to be available for women because, I mean, why? Well, we've, we've got the sort of baggy jeans are coming back and I quite like that, you know, yeah. the sort of comfy look. That's so I'm, all. Out of, I'm out of fashion already. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're on trend, darling, you're on trend. So, um, so yeah, the, the inflatable trousers are interesting. One comment I saw, which I thought was quite, quite funny, um, looks a bit like you've weed in your wetsuit. <laughs> If anybody out there surfs and you've had the experience, then you'll know exactly what we mean. Um, so, I don't know. It looks Do you like their testicles have fallen down to their oh, no. So, uh, moving on. So, that's the key trend to look out for this month. <laughs> the other thing, well, McDonald's. Right, well, we know candles. Women love a smelly candle. And we've got a candle theme. Last month, we were talking about the Gwyneth Paltrow smells like my vagina one. Well, guess we what? Were. McDonald's, I think, have topped it on the smelly scale with this... This candle, which it's actually it's not one candle, it's, it's six. A box set. A box set. <laughs> it's six <laughs> candles. The quarter pounder scented candle. Like, so. Unbelievable. Six. Each individual smell, so get this. The, one's a the bun, one's ketchup, one's pickle, one's cheese, one candle smells of onion. And finally, the pièce de résistance is the 100% fresh beef candle. And apparently, Goodness according me. to McDonald's, you need to burn them together for maximum deliciousness. Okay, so perhaps not one for the vegans in the audience. <laughs> Maybe that might be the next thing, the McDonald's vegan box set of candles. Who I mean, knows? I would rather, to me, that's going to smell like a smelly man's armpit. I'd rather have Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle if I had to choose. <laughs> anyway, if anyone's got any experience of the McDonald's candle or the Gwyneth candle or any other candles for that matter that you think we should talk about, then, then let us know. But now, over to our first interview. So all parents struggle with the balance between work and looking after the kids. We're delighted today. We've got Sherilyn McRory, who's MP for Truro and Falmouth, and also Nikki Woods, who is the MD of County Employee Benefits and also Mum of Nine. And they're here to tell us how they actually cope with all the demands, um, which we all know are, are quite, quite a lot at times. So, first thing, so Sherilyn, your story is quite amazing. So, you were part time mum at home yeah. in Cornwall. Yeah. Um, then Sarah Newton stepped down, yeah. the um, local Conservative MP, and um, you were asked to, to step into her shoes, as it were. So do you want to tell us what happened? And yes, how well, I was, so I was working part-time um, in a different MP's office, uh, but all around school hours, because I've got a five-year-old. And, uh, and yes, she stepped down. And it was something that I thought I might like to do in the future, so when my daughter was a bit older. Um, so I'd put in the application form some time ago, and I hadn't really had an acknowledgement. I was just you know, letting it kind of do its thing. Uh, and then sort of people whispered and said, Are you, do you want to do it? And I said, look, if you want me to do it, it's there. You push it along. And, um, and they did. So, <laughs> so, so then I, I, got, uh, to, I had to go for a, a, quite a rigorous interview. And I got down to the last three. And then you have to go and present to the local party. So 150 people. And it's a bit like being on question time, but you're the only one. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite something. It's quite a baptism of fire. Um, but we did that. And I was selected. 
And then my husband and I woke up the next morning and thought we'd woken up in someone else's life because it just, that's it, just took and off from there. does it feel like someone else's life? It's start- start- a little bit, yeah. <laughs> it's starting to plateau a little bit now because we've, we've, you know, a few months later and we're starting to get used to it. But it is, it, it's so strange because suddenly you have to do, I had to do a radio interview the very next morning and then when I was elected I had to go on telly, which is like scary. But um, it is, you're suddenly doing lots of new firsts and it's terrifying and then you get used to it and hopefully... I'll keep getting used to it. <laughs> so. It's just amazing, isn't it, how life can change and how adaptable we, we really are when we, we need to be. Yeah. So, Nikki, you've got a similar story. So you were working for um, a large organisation and decided to set up on, on your own. And, and you've got this amazing blended family of, of nine kids, haven't you? So yeah. how does that all work day to day? So um, it's challenging. A lot of the children now are a lot older, so it obviously makes things a lot bit easier. But now um, we now have grandchildren. So um, the youngest is 16, the eldest is 37. So th- there's a, quite a big age gap between them. Plus as well now we're having the grandchildren, which is great because we're able now to help out. So one day a week we have the grandchildren just to help out and help you yeah. know, the rest of the children that are now at work mm. and help and support them, try and ch- juggle the whole childcare thing, which yeah. is quite a challenge, like you yeah. say, trying to balance everything. So having been there, done that, seen what it was like, we're now able to kind of repay that back and, mm. and help people as well and yeah. try and support them mm-hmm. whilst they go out and, and do their jobs and, and their careers as and well. And there's more of that, isn't the sort of multi-generation, sort of all the care happening yeah. at different levels. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I want to talk about mental health in the workplace because obviously with all of these things going on, it's really mm. important that people are happy. Mm. And Nikki, your, your job is in employee benefits, yeah. so you spend all of your time looking at ways to make sure people are, are remunerated mm. in a way that makes them happy. And we, we used to think of that as money yeah. but of course these days it isn't just that it's other things no. it's childcare support it's flexible working so what sort of things would you be saying to employers are, are good ideas for your um for employees that have got kids and and, other, and, and trying to balance and trying those to balance stuff yeah I, I think for most businesses it's a real challenge for them these days to try and retain and attract good quality people and actually look after them and support them and through people's different um, um, life cycles, they have different needs, different requirements. So younger people are looking to try and get onto the housing ladder and trying to buy a house. Um, and then as people get older, you're looking at retirement. And then like say kind of the middle um, sector is kind of looking after a family and supporting them. So there are lots of things that can be done within a business to support their employees. And it's not going to be a case of one one size fits all so it's making sure you've got all those mechanisms that are in place some things cost money some things don't so it can be as simple as providing fruit so people have got a healthy body which then in turn promotes a healthy mind looking at employee assistance helplines so should people um, have issues so um, you know if they've got issues at home that don't want to talk about then they've got access to a helpline that's completely confidential and they can talk about them and receive counselling. So there's lots and lots of different things that you can do um, to help and support your employees. And I think um, that the workforce has changed dramatically over the years um, and what people need um, to be able to support them in their everyday life. And I think most companies need to look at their overall workforce, the dynamics and what's going to work and make sure they've got those things in place and signpost them in the right way and a lot of those things are not very expensive so you can have you don't have to have a huge budget to have an employee benefits policy that makes everyone feel wonderful things like having fruit in the office flexible working and even things like life assurance sometimes that's quite a cheap Mm. thing to provide but it can provide a huge amount of comfort to people that things would be okay um, yeah. in the event they, they weren't there. So. And the, the life insurance policies have changed dramatically as well. So a lot of those are now starting to add additional extras. So okay. like you say, so um, you know you don't want to be having a conversation should the worst thing happen and leaving some poor bereaved family with no financial support should mm. the main earner of a family um, pass away. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them also have um, employee assistance programs also built into them. It's a horrible word, because most people go, what does that mean? <laughs> but it is, it, it's a helpline to support people from financial woes mm. um, to personal issues, to getting a divorce, mm. um, and then offer face-to-face counselling. So a lot of um, the policies, not just life insurance, there are lots of um, other benefits out there 
that start to add these additional benefits in um, where you can make the most of those and embed them into um, your, your policies within a business mm. and promote them as much as possible. Because yeah. ultimately, I mean, what businesses are trying to do is, is create the, the diverse workforce. Mm. And, and I think tying it back to what's mm. going on in Westminster mm. here and, and Cheryl and you starting your role mm. um, in government is, is amazing. So what is government doing that allows you to do your job in the way that you'd like? And, and we yeah, don't yeah. need to get into no, MPs' no, expenses no. here or oh, anything no, like no. that. But there must yeah. be things that have changed. Yeah, we, absolutely. We think about what, what government looked like a few years ago yeah. um, and now. So, so what sort of support are you getting? Well, Parliament, uh, the way that Parliament works is the Speaker is in charge of that. So actually, um, people have very um, divisive issues, um, divisive views on what John Burko was like, but actually he brought in quite a lot of good reforms in this way and Lindsay Hall is taking them on front and centre. And, and so there are things like, um, like you were saying about helplines. Mm. So one of the statistics, I think, for n new MPs is that relationship breakdown is quite common uh, in the first year, um, there's an awful lot of relationship breakdown. So they're right. really they're really keen to try and combat that. Um, and also, um, all the parties are trying to get more normal people into into parliament because yeah, we should have more, mm, you absolutely. know, bigger a bigger yeah. array of um, people in parliament. And I think parliment has now recognised if you're going to do that, that, there needs to be more support. So um, I, I have a female colleague who's um, pregnant, and she has been offered all sorts of support to make sure that that happens. And she can still do her job. I know Antoine, and I think it was Antoinette Sandbach from um, in Walthamstow mm -hmm. has recently had her baby and she was able to have um, her staff step in and cover some of her MP duties, not necessarily in the house, but mm. in her constituency so that she can feel like she's still representing her constituency. Um, and there are things such as proxy voting and pairing so that if you physically can't get there for family reasons, then then the whips will allow you to do that. But I think you have to have quite extenuating circumstances. But that stuff is brilliant. Mm. I mean, that really is encouraging other other mm. young young mums and dads mm -hmm. to, to go into Parliament. Mm. And that's something that couldn't have happened a few years ago. No, it's definitely and, changing. And is that, I mean, obviously we're talking about it here today mm. on Thinking Women, but is that something that's been made quite public? You know, is, is, is Parliament going out saying, look, things are changing, we really want to, to get other people involved, and this is what yeah. we're doing? I think with the new speaker that that will happen, because remember, Parliament is there, is there as a function to facilitate government, uh, to facilitate uh, democracy, if you like. Um, and the parties, all the parties, are there to kind of attract candidates in to come and come and do things. So if I'm a Conservative and the, we have what we call the Conservative Women's Organisation. So Conservatives don't have all women par uh, shortlists, so you have to get there on your own merit. But once you're there, they really want to kind of assist you and make sure that you don't become victim to any of these pitfalls. So, for example, last week, my husband was invited to London to go to a partner's reception. We weren't invited, but all, oh, the, husband, all the husbands and, boy, and boyfriends and partners were allowed to go along and, and talk to each other brilliant. because there are, there are you know, they, they suddenly go from being the breadwinner, if you like, suddenly being in the shadows and, yeah. it's, and they all accept it, it differently and some of them are, roll with it really fine and some of them find it more difficult. And I think unless they talk to each other about it, no one else would really understand how that feels It's for quite them. specific so, issues, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and there is one for wives as well, by the way, but I think it's because, <laughs> yeah. there's, because there's more women coming into Parliament, suddenly they've realised that the husbands that need got help to as well. That. Yeah. yeah, no, it's fascinating. It's, it's really, really great news. So yeah. um, one other question I wanted to ask, actually, so, and this is about what to wear for work. So there was something in the press recently around um, what's appropriate and what might not be appropriate for, for wearing when you're giving your speech yeah. in um, the House of Commons. Yeah. Um, I've always been quite conservative in what I wear in the office. I, I, I do like, you know, nice little prints and so on and denim dresses, but ultimately you've got to be very aware of, of what your clients um, expect and so on. But yeah. quickly, what are your thoughts on, on <laughs> dress for work? <laughs> Well, in the house, they say business attire, so right. um, it's whatever you think business attire is, and you know most people kind of have a have a view of what that is. I think we all know what we're talking about. But she, <laughs> in her defence, she was on her way out to a function, so I think it's right. kind of a I'm not going to, to to go one side or the other on that one. But she, yeah. So I think. Um, what do I have to wear? I, I, I wear, I'm in jeans today, aren't I? Because I've been to different meetings. But in the chamber, it would always be a, a dress or a skirt for me um, and, a, you know, a suit jacket or a cardigan or something looking nice. I like to look, if I can, look quite feminine because that's just what I want to Absolutely. look Absolutely. Like. And yeah. I think there's a danger. I mean, I remember back in the 90s wearing lots of trouser suits and always yeah, trying to yeah. fit in yeah. with the men and then sort of reacting to that and saying, no, I, I want to wear a flowery dress. I want to yeah. be, I want to be a woman. I don't have to pretend to fit in. Yeah. I, I want to be want to, to look nice. Yeah. And I know you had a lovely 
dress on for your maiden speech. Which I yeah, saw the, and also it's quite nice to get some colour on the green benches as well because all these <laughs> so many boring grey suits and yeah. uh, you know, it's, I'm in black today. But um, it's you know, you kind of have a look around on and see what the women are wearing. It's quite nice, especially PMQs. You'll notice they get they pull out the bright dresses. It's everybody wants yeah. to look quite colourful. Yeah, and catch well, the people, speaker's eye. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Nikki. What are your thoughts? Well, I think, I think um, things have changed dramatically over the years. So, like you say, it used to be very kind of traditional suits, um, whereas now things are much more relaxed. People don't have to wear ties to the mm. office anymore, which no, is quite rare, isn't it? And important. I think so long as you dress appropriately and you're not showing your midriff, mm. those days are gone, by the way, <laughs> um, but, you know, just making sure that you do dress appropriately. Mm. So, so long as you're smart, you're not wearing, like, ripped jeans mm. and, and things like that. More people now. You go to business meetings, and people are wearing jeans and, and that type of thing. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm. it's mm. if if you're employed to to use your brain, mm. it doesn't really matter, I suppose, no, what you no. you're wearing. Yeah. Anyway, mm. well, it's been fascinating speaking to you both. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on the show, and best of luck for for everything <laughs> yeah. that you're Thank you're both you. doing. You're a real inspiration. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And if you guys have got any thoughts on that, then get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you. So now it's time for tip of the week. And I actually think I'm going to call this bit Mags's marvellous makeover <laughs> because Mags is back in the hot chair. I'm here again. And yes. we've got the wonderful Ella Butler, celebrity makeup artist Ella Butler. Now, what Ella's going to do today is show us how to, you know, that transition a bit where you have to go from work or daytime into evening. And we want to kind of like oomph our makeup up a little bit. So maybe a smoky eye or just just how to make the eyes look more dramatic for even from day just to evening a little bit of an exaggerated look just to take you from day to night basically yeah okay so off you so go then we've already done a little bit of color matching for mags so i've got um a foundation that i'm just going to use all over the lid first of all so you could do this with your fingers but i'm just going to show you really how you can do it with really quickly with just a couple of brushes so you just need a little bit of foundation you could use concealer for this so if you just want to close your eyes keep them closed a minute and then just work it all over the lid. So this is presuming that you've obviously got nothing on the eyelid in the daytime already. Just so work what, it all so the way up to the why brow. Why putting the foundation on then? So that will just help to hold and adhere the eyeshadow that you're going to apply oh, in a okay. moment. I mean, you could use a specific um, eyelid primer. Quite often, they're you know they're really great because they help things not to crease. I used a couple of different great ones, but actually, just if you know if you've all you've got in your in your makeup kit is a foundation you're kind of good to go and you can do this with your fingers if needs be so you could do it really quick straight after work um, or if you're a busy mum you're just a quick dab with a finger just up to the brow there like that so right into the lash line and also if you just want to open your eyes a minute and just run a little bit and just look straight up to the ceiling just up underneath the eye there as well oh, so you're okay. getting really close into the lash line obviously not onto the waterline itself um, and just up underneath the lashes so that then what you're going to apply in a moment is going to help um, to be adhered, as I say, to to the skin and keep it there. Uh, for, okay, for the evening, for because the obviously evening, you yeah. want it to have a little bit more impact. Yeah. And actually, quite a good tip then is to maybe if you haven't finished your, the rest of your makeup yet, do this part first. You can tidy away anything that you might have dropped down underneath. Use a little Q-tip, and then go back over your under eye area with the foundation or the concealer, so that you get a really nice, crisp, clean finish. Well, that's interesting because if I use dark eyeshadow, if I use a darker eyeshadow at night. It, most yeah. of it ends up kind of making my dark circles look even worse because well, it's like it. in the troughs. <laughs> and most people do actually, when they do their makeup, apply their skin makeup first. And actually, I've always preferred when I'm working on um, TV broadcasts or anything where you have to have really close up work done, much like this, you know, photos and things like that, um, to do the eyes first because then actually you do get a really crisp finish, really nice finish. You can just tidy away any of that drop down so it looks really nice and mm -hmm. clean. Um, so oh, I'm going to use something today again. Yeah, Good. Go. Um, a bit of a palette, a bit of a warm palette for your eyes because you've got lovely, cool, grey, grey blue eyes. So actually, I'm just going to start with something really quite neutral on the lid, all the way across, right up into the socket. Um, this one is called Caraway, and this is the Arbonne palette. So I'm just going to use a little bit of um, that product all the way across the lid. So just keep them closed, and you can just tap that in all the way over the lid, right the way into the inside corner there. And you don't need to use any amazing technique. This is just a case of just dabbing That's good to the know. product all the way. <laughs> so you don't need to be a pro. Um, and if again, you've got the right brushes, Ella, does that matter? Does you know, that help? It's helpful. I always say it's a bit like if you're going to paint a wall, you wouldn't do it with your fingers. Right. However, if you don't have them, as long as you are cautious with what you're doing, then you can make that work too. Okay. So if you don't have them at the minute, don't panic. You can give it a go anyway. But work that all the way over 
to the corner of the eye here. Just open your eyes a minute. So you can see already, it's just given a nice bit of definition from one side to the other on the crease there. Yep, if you lovely. just turn your head slightly that way, okay. you'll see what I mean if you come back there. So it's just given that element of warmth yeah. there. Yeah. So you could, I mean, you could even just emphasize that a little bit more. So I'm just gonna tap away the excess there and then go in for um, a color called Cypress now. So this is just to like deepen the socket line. Um, and this is really like a smoky brown. So this, I'm just gonna focus on the outer edge, almost in a V shape. So going into the crease and then coming back into the lash line as well. So again, okay. you're gonna tap that into tapping, the- Tapping, tapping, um, not rubbing. The crease, no, so or tapping that in. Flowing, and especially if I would not do. flowing. <laughs> if you've done your makeup, because that's as why my lens are put over there uh, yeah, on my cheeks. That's isn't it. it? So you've flowing. already got that drop down. And if you were going to ah. have yourself, you know, photoed or anything like this, obviously that would be visible on yeah. camera. And, okay. and it is to the naked eye; just people <laughs> don't necessarily pay attention to it. So right into your lash line. Um, and even if you think, oh my god, it looks a little bit heavy to start with, it's that's a great thing. You can blend with another finger, <laughs> or you can blend with another brush. So blending, this is just blending. keeping it really, really. Um, subtle for a smoky really just right round that um, socket line there and, and the trick really with this is if you open your eye a moment don't take it any further in than the pupil because otherwise you're going to close the eyes so you just want to keep it on that outer V outer edge and then just blend it away and, and so keep I'm going to dust as down. wide open and that's it and, and wide awake that's, that's, what, it. Always, that's what I always want to look like yeah away a wide awake eye. <laughs> definitely don't want to have a closed eye look so we're going to get probably a few little bits that will drop down on there but that doesn't matter so just bring your head up slightly then with a clean brush the technique then is just to blend so you're working the blending, almost yeah. blurring that line so you're not dragging it as such you're, you're just buffing it backwards and forwards and again as long as you've got a clean finger then you can do that with a finger if needs be but Preferably have but then brushes. you said at the beginning, you're yeah. showing how to do this because it's a quick, quick a and quick easy transition. So you're using I mean, literally minimal two brushes, colours. two colours yeah. and a palette. And that's and quite nice to have a palette as well yeah. because... They're lovely those yeah. and they've got really good pigments as well. So you don't need to um, use much product so it lasts a long time. Yeah, I've just got one for it. That's it. And then I would just say for underneath there as well, take the same colour or you could deepen that a little bit further on the lash line. Wrong palette. Um, with a black or again, you could use the brown there, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of this one, which is called Onyx. So if you just look straight up for me, the eyes open. So this is taking a flat edged brush. And this you can't okay. really do with fingers. You could smudge it with fingers, but up underneath, and almost like you're just drawing a little line. So an eyeshadow yeah. as an eyeliner. And that just gives oh, it a really nice yeah, sort of like sultry, that. smudgy effect, yeah. really. Lovely. So you, again, you don't need very much. A, that's a good tip. I like I like that because I think if you're in a hurry and you've got a line, unless you're really professional with a um, or proficient, should I say, with a, a line of pencil, and if you're in a hurry or you've got kids yeah. running around or whatever, oh God, that's it. that eyeliner could be as you know half a centimetre thick. I hundred percent. So you're you're likely to make less mistakes doing so actually, what you're doing there, aren't you? That's I it. Think. And actually, you know, if you have got kids running around, I think smudgy look is great. <laughs> smudgy all the way. So yeah, just if you open your eyes again, so the last little bit would just be to soften around the edges. Just look straight up for me. And then you're just giving that a blended, almost blurred effect around the edge. Now, if you wanted to, you could take a liner pencil, work it onto the inside lash line, um, and also on the water line on the top as well. So if you were to look to the floor a minute, you could actually work it up underneath there mm -hmm. and just go for an extra layer of mascara for the evening too that really yeah. helps opens just the eyes a, and, yeah, and a good mascara that really lengthens the lashes yeah. and then to finish i would simply i would i would maybe take you know five minutes total to do this sort of look on yourself at taking it from day to night and just look up for me so you can go back in underneath there with a little bit more concealer or foundation Amazing. as i say just to tidy it up but you really can see in that so what's that taking you ella Three minutes, minutes four really. minutes, maximum. Yeah, a couple of minutes. Um, just to get, so quick in the office, you could be doing in the office, quickly while your kids are yeah. kind of screaming around That's you it. while you're having your first gin and tonic of the evening. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I would be doing. Just really quickly get that lovely look and it really does go. make a difference. Just you gives really a can see the difference. Yep. Impact. Yeah, more impact. And you've only got one done, but <laughs> you definitely do want to do that the second one too. fab. That looks fab. All Thank right. you so much, no Ella. That is absolutely Thank brilliant. You, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> The tragic death of TV presenter Caroline Flack last month has really brought into the spotlight how women are treated in the media and actually online me social media as well. And it's a discussion, um, I think, that's gaining momentum. So if you think about the, the Me Too campaign from, from last year, now we have the Be Kind, hashtag Be Kind. 
Um, and it really, really is gaining momentum. And so it's obviously time to address how we support one another ultimately, not only online, but in society as a whole. So I'm joined today by the lovely um, Emma Griffin, who is a spiritual healer mm -hmm. and coach, and she's created a sacred space for women to guide, heal and support them and ultimately yeah, right. empower women. Mm -hmm. So Emma, from your professional perspective, how, how are women presenting themselves to you in light of what I've just introduced there? What are women saying mm -hmm. to you when they come to your space? It's a range of different women aged from 19 to 65. I've had 102 and nearly all of them are fearing of judgment from other women, not from um, men or partners, it's all from other women. They're all mainly suffering with depression and anxiety and they're just struggling, exhausted. So this is interesting, isn't it? So. Mm -hmm. I was always brought up to believe that women support women yeah. and women look after other yeah. women and we big each other up. So yeah. why has this happened, do you think, that somehow mm -hmm. in this last 10, 15 years, is it social media that's created that chasm that's allowed that to happen? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I love social media. Um, it has got lots of posi you know, positivity towards it, but then also I think because we're shown an illusion of the perfect house, the perfect figure, how we should be, how we should be as a mum, as a wife, it's not reality. And I think we have a lot more pressures these days as women to actually match what we're seeing on social media. And I think because you can hide behind a profile, you can say what you want, you don't care if it's hurtful. So this is where all the trolls come from and things like that. And I think it's just really sad at the moment, but I do think it is social media. And of course, social media does good things too. Yeah. And as a result of, mm. as I was saying in the introduction, um, Caroline Flack's death, it's brought yeah. to our attention really how powerful social media is. And mm. on the bad side, like you say, but also it's brought up this hashtag be kind campaign. Yeah. And it is interesting though, we're having to really tell ourselves to be kind. Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. that be? It should be just actual normal, shouldn't it? it should, we should always be like that anyway. But I think because we're seeing it so much and with all the magazines, um, they're all saying it and being horrible. It's just becoming natural for especially younger women to actually be nasty. And it becomes a new normal, yeah. I think, ultimately. Yeah. And I know I'm guilty of it. I have to say, mm. you know, I get pulled into scrolling and I get pulled into mm. looking through the certain times of types of magazines that really, really... Yeah you know, body shame yeah. and, you know, yeah. they love to show. Mm. I mean, I know we're talking about celebrities here, but celebrities are humans and that yeah. was proven by yeah. Caroline Flack's situation. You know, a celebrity without makeup on, oh my goodness, a yeah. woman with no makeup. Yeah, or a woman aging. You know, yeah. it's awful. Yeah. Well, I was watching, so how, I mean, how, do, so how, so how do we deal with that? How, in your, in yeah. your professional experience, how, I think, how do we handle this? Um, I think we need to understand that what we see, especially on Instagram, is not necessarily real life. Um, it is the nicest part of somebody, or they choose to show the nicest thing. I think everyone wants to take a selfie in the best light as well, which is, you know, we all want to look our best, I suppose. Um, I think what I do in the sacred space is I allow women to actually stop and connect to themselves. Everyone's so fast, everyone's rushing around all the time, no one's really giving themselves self-care. And I think if you had self-love, then you wouldn't necessarily have to be so judgmental on other people. So. And I think there are tricks in our, there are tools in our toolbox yeah. that we can help ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's easy advise? to be triggered by seeing an image and then feeling, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not young enough or it brings up the imposter syndrome and things like that. But I think if you really check in with yourself and sort of acknowledge those feelings and then turn that to a positive and just be still, just meditate or journal or have a nice bath or go out in nature. Here in Cornwall, we've got amazing places to be, and I think that would help us before we make that remark or before you type something. Yeah, I mean, really, just put it down and move yeah. away, and just move yeah. away from it, and have some yeah. some space. Because you don't realise what you're going to do, how that's going to affect somebody, and words hurt. Mm. So, but it is interesting how people will be those keyboard warriors, and they will mm. say very hurtful things in anonymity. Yeah, and I just question why. Again, why? 
Do people think yeah. that's okay? I think it's something within them that they need to heal, personally. If that was healed, they wouldn't be projecting that. So, so then that's a whole other yeah. that's a whole other area of mental health that yeah. needs to be looked at as well, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. again, we have to wonder what has society done yeah. to give those people so much pain yeah. that they need to project that onto yeah, to other people. Yeah. Jealous. Jealousy yeah. and judgment. Yeah, and this feeling of competitive. That I don't believe anyone's your competitor because no one's you. Mm. So And that brings us back around to what you're saying at the beginning of our conversation. Mm that it's quite often women competing with women and women yeah. judging other women. Yeah. We need to stop it, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Just know. <laughs> you know. We should support each other, Absolutely. empower each other, and um, be more of a sisterhood and just sort of lift each other, especially women running their own businesses. I think we all need to help each other with that. Mm. And mums, mums are being judged all the time, and that's unfair. Yeah. This judgment thing. I mean, we, you know, we are here to empower each other. And I think mm. the more people that can rise up with that knowledge. I mean, maybe, mm. you know, nobody's death is a good thing at all. But to have something so dramatically brought to our attention, to move that energy, to make us talk about it, to make us move ahead. Yeah. It's out making of darkness us think. can come light. Yeah. So. It's making us think, and also probably looking at other women and sort of judging yourself as well to make sure that you are supportive and not doing anything negative upsetting to others. Yeah, and just check in with yourself at all times. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to do that as well. Yeah. And, and even <laughs> smiling at people, yeah. asking if they're okay. Yeah. Just, just, checking, just checking in with your neighbours and your friends yeah. and just checking yeah. that they're... Nobody knows what's going on at home. So, exactly. And most people that come and see me, they have something quite serious that they're dealing with. So, but they come in with a smiley face. So you never know. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. So. And it's tough. And I think the social media and media has just been mm. building on that. And I, I, mm. I just want one last thought. I um, have seen some pieces in, in social media, again, mm. of, of salons, like hairdressing salons and beauty salons. You know, those places where we're going to, yeah. to kind of... Know, make ourselves look better that yeah. quite often those salons would have the sort of closers and the nows those sort of magazines mm. who would have yeah oh look at her she looks so old oh look at her yeah. without any makeup on oh look at her cellulite and um i think it started with one salon in scotland and mm. they took those magazines out yeah and they replaced them with self-care ones with you know yeah. just just some interesting inspirational magazines which do exist yeah you yeah. know health magazines yeah and what one of the salons had found was instead of women coming and sitting in the in the chair and mm. and just talking about what they were seeing in the magazine and actually mm. talking about you know yeah. the negativity instead inspired by what they were seeing in the, the more positive magazines were talking about themselves yeah and experiences they want to have i think if the magazines stop doing all of this then it becomes not normal i think because especially younger women are looking at things on social media and in magazines they think it's okay to actually you know judge someone or pick up people's flaws mm. so and that's what we have to good. remember it's it's not the normal and i no. think what we need to try and get back to is remembering what inside yeah. of us is the normal yeah yeah and we're all awesome <laughs> absolutely we're all awesome i love that <laughs> oh, well on that note i think Thank we'll you. We could go on for a long, long time on this yeah. subject. Amazing, fascinating stuff. And keep Thank up you. with your good work, Emma. Thank you Obviously very much. making a big difference. And I would say, you know, if anybody has any questions or comments on this issue or anything that we're talking about, obviously, on Thinking Women, it's your show. So please email us, contact us on Twitter or, or any of our social media platforms. So, Emma, again, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. And now, competition time. And a huge thank you to Made for Life Organics who sent us this beautiful, beautiful box of facial products to win this month. We're very, very grateful and it's the beautiful organic products. So to enter, just visit us online and answer our simple question. And thanks to all our guests today. It's been absolutely amazing. Awesome show. It's been great, yes. I think we're going to be back next month. So get in contact and um, thanks again. Take care. Bye. Bye.